Good morning, everybody. Good morning, afternoon, good day, good evening. Very good morning. Could be super early in the morning for you. It is 11 a.m. on Wednesday, April 7th. And I'm going to play some Abzu. Hi, everybody. Wait, come on over. Come on over this way. Come on over this way so I can get closer to the microphone. Hi, everybody. Hopefully I look okay and sound okay. Um, this is Abzu. This is the third episode of Mindful Games, which is my new series that you can check out on youtube.com slash easyallies. I'm going to do a five-minute meditation at the end of like a 10 or 15-minute stream. This is going to be a very quick check-in mentally with everybody. Um, hopefully everything, yeah, seems all right. Uh, this is Abzu again. This is the third episode. I did an episode on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, an episode on Ghost of Tsushima, which we also streamed the last couple weeks. If this is your third time, welcome back to the, the, the new only six-part, uh, maybe returning later, Mindful Game Meditation series here on Twitch, uh, where I do a guided meditation based on this game, based on stuff that I've been thinking about. So you watch the episode, and you learn kind of things that you can do yourself through the game, but then for this meditation stream, I pick a nice little spot. Uh, in a lot of these games, there's many places to do so. Uh, this is the first non-open world game I've covered in this series. But if you want another episode, if you want four episodes total, you can go to patreon.com slash easyallies. And at our $5 tier, you can uh, get early access on this and a bunch of other stuff. And the next episode is Spirit Fair. And that went up this morning, early access for everybody on Patreon. But you can see this episode right now. You can see the Abzude episode right now on YouTube if you want to check it out. Uh, I got my little robo guys. Uh, I'm in the first real zone uh, if you go to chapters, it'll take you back to the beginning of the game, but this is uh, um, very, very close to the beginning of the game. Try to avoid spoilers as much as possible in mindful games, so don't want to spoil anything. But uh, Abzu is you, is you swimming. You're just, you're swimming. <laughs> that's, that's Abzu. For everybody who hasn't played it, uh, you swim around, you gotta get somewhere. Yeah, you gotta do some things. You learn a little bit more about the world, maybe, and you, but... Uh, um, much like uh, Flow and Flower and Journey, and uh, this was uh, many staff members from those games. Um, a lot of it is left open to interpretation. And interpretation is at, at the very heart of mindfulness. So the hope of uh, working on the show is to um, obviously not only give you represented representations of games that you can play that can maybe make you think about these things or put you in a relaxing state, but you f just thinking about the concept of being relaxed in general and just kind of ways that you can do that. And, Ways that you can chill out, because life can get very stressful. And for me, it's not only just about stress, it's about speed. Life can just go by too fast for me. I just need, I need more time to process things before something else happens. And so the key is to give yourself that time. And that's kind of the point of, one of the points of us not streaming too long today. We're only, only going to stream for a little bit. Um, my little robot guys will help me get past that little pink wall, but we're not going to use them just yet. We're going to go back to a meditation spot. Um, and I want to showcase one of the things that's uh, that's fun about Abzu that, you know, we, we played Valhalla and, you know, there's obviously lots of spiritual connection going on in that game. We played Tsushima and there's like hot springs and, you know, you're writing poetry. So there's lots of uh, moments of mindfulness, ways that you can pause. Uh, but in this, uh, you're actually like real deal meditating. I think like the developers actually want you to try to practice real meditation. So you see this little shark icon over here. We're going to go over to him. And we're going to actually meditate on there. I cannot take out the music in this game. Normally I would uh, edit a little music uh, to to the tune of your five minute break that we're going to take today. But the music is married to Abzu. And I want you to hear the, the, the depth of the water. All the fish swimming by and the various ambient sound effects. Um, but I can't, can't do my own mix for you. We're going to have to let Abzu take the wheel. Um, but this is different from... The meditations we've done before in that we're actually going to be going into a meditative mode that's present in the game once you find all of these places and i missed two of them on my first playthrough of abzu which was for this series i had actually never played abzu before um and uh um, you can go back at any time and you can revisit those meditation spots and so after you've beaten this game this can potentially be a tool uh whether you enjoy underwater some people in chat are recognizing it because they have followed my exploits live and otherwise where I explained that uh, I'm actually not a big fan of dark water. It's actually one of the things that really scares the heck out of me. This is fairly nice. It's a cave. I can see most of the areas. I know the floor of the cave is right there, so I'm doing all right, but there are definitely some moments in this game uh, that you can get into some dark water spots and it's uh, tense. We all have those fears. I will be potentially confronting those fears today, but I want to talk about some other things as we do this meditation, so... 
Press the touchpad button to meditate. So you hit this button, and then you are... Oh, boom! Kicking it off with some savage murder here under the sea, just the way it goes in the animal kingdom. But this uh, black sea bass, uh, you know, ruthlessly taking out a competitor. Um, but yeah, we're, you, you can move the analog stick to look at the animals, and you can uh, move the left analog stick to move to the next animal. But I'm going to mostly get, let the game steer, just so I can focus on y'all. Um, and uh, I hope you're having a wonderful week. It's been a pleasure to do this at the middle of the week. I think it's a good opportunity for us to kind of take stock. And for some of us, weeks don't matter. <laughs> Days don't matter. Um, what is life? Um, but it is, you know, the... The, the regular week, if you follow it. Uh, we're around the middle of it. So I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday. It was wonderful to see all of you. And let's do a meditation and then uh, get on with the rest of the day. Uh, again, Mike and Mike is canceled later today, uh, so we, but we do have other streams coming up. And I'm going to be spending the day getting ready for the Easy Allies podcast, which I'll be doing tomorrow. And of course, the next episode of uh, Mindful Games, which will be uh, early access next week on Patreon, which is Life is Strange. And then Animal Crossing, which you can be a part of. So stay tuned to patreon.com Easy Allies for information on that. Thank you for all of your support with Mindful Games. Thank you for hanging out today. Uh, and congratulations again if you're around for the third time. The th third time you've shown up for a scheduled meditation. You're hooked now. You are officially a meditator. Let's do it. The male California sheephead is a black and orange fish. I mean, you have scientists that study fish. And yes, one of the great things about science is we get a greater understanding of um, of nature, of the world around us. But at the same time, you know, I've seen and, and read and heard a lot of scientists say that the more they learn, the more they realize what they don't know. And so that's the feeling that I get when I go out and uh, look at nature, whether I go on a hike or go camping or... Um, you know, in this case, watch fish, which you don't have to swim out into the middle of the ocean to do so. Uh, you can go to an aquarium. You can own a fish yourself. And it's unmistakable. doesn't matter what the species is. You look into the eyes of a fish and you see a sublime simplicity. <laughs> Just this approach to existence um, that it's easy to think two different ways. You know, you can feel bad that... This fish doesn't know. This fish doesn't know what it's like to watch anime. This fish doesn't know what it's like to go to a baseball game. This fish, you know, doesn't know what it's like to fly in a plane. You know, there's just a lot of exciting things that humans get to do that this fish will not get to do. But at the same time, this fish right now is probably existing in a much more peaceful state than we haven't experienced since we were babies. That we won't really get to know again because we are uh, burdened with knowledge and glorious purpose. And those things can be uh, very stressful. And I think in our present day society, we can kind of take that for granted how difficult that kind of a lifestyle can be. How difficult it can, it can be trying to listen to our brains and trying to understand um, what we're thinking, what our, what our minds are telling us. There's a lot of these savage Goliath groupers. Hopefully maybe we can find a more peaceful fish. Here we go. So yeah, animals don't have language. They don't have words in the way that we do. So one thing potentially to think about is how you express yourself with words, how much you might rely on words to understand other people or to make yourself understood. As somebody who kind of traffics in words <laughs> from either making videos or saying things live, writing tweets, writing blogs, trying to find the right word, trying to have yourself be expressed you know, moments where that doesn't necessarily go as you had intended, what you learned from it. All these poor, poor fish getting eaten. The leopard shark. And it's not just fish, obviously birds. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of us have a cat or a dog. Um, that expresses themselves in, in a much different way than a fish does, but um, that's obviously one of the, the reasons why people need at least that small connection to nature in their lives, in the place where they live. Because it's one thing to just have the actual act of, you know, petting a dog, petting a cat. They've 
that has long been proven to uh, positively affect our brains and our emotions. But just looking at them, just having a cat or a dog or a fish or a bird look at you, recognize you, see you, and you have to wonder, what does it think I am? These birds that come to our house because Amanda has wonderfully put out a little environment for them to come and bathe and eat seeds and run away from squirrels. What do they think we are? How do they feel about us? How long do they experience that emotion? Yes, this game freaked me out a little bit. Chat wants to know. I get nervous when I'm underwater because I'm not on home turf. That's the way I like to put it. Uh, you're definitely in an alien world. There are still places underneath the sea that we haven't really had. Go ask James Cameron. The man is obsessed. There is a lot we have left to learn about Mother Nature, but especially all the crazy, crazy systems at play. I like an Abzu that you can see yourself. But, you know, there we are in our little meditation spot, observing all the things around us. So you can see yourself existing in this world, but also being very much a part of it. Apart from it, excuse me. That was a great documentary on Netflix. Uh, my octopus teacher, I believe. My teacher, the octopus. Um, that's about someone who has a, a very long and uh, focused relationship scientifically with an octopus, just studying it and... He said all of, in all of his experiences being underwater, he didn't really feel apart from the world. He definitely felt like he belonged there, even though he had to wear a suit, even though he had to... Um, he actually didn't use uh, oxygen. He went up to the surface and learned to hold his... Uh, studied and learned to hold his breath for a long period of time. But he very much felt a connection and an understanding of not only how these things live in the moment, but how they live day to day, week to week, month to month. So, part of mindfulness is understanding what's going on in your world, but also kind of challenging that reality in terms of what we're getting to do now, which is just looking at turtles, <laughs> looking at sharks, looking at fish, living their life, and coming to terms with what that makes us think about how we live our own lives. And just peace and quiet. This is just the game. And this mode can just go and go and go. So if you're curious to check out Abzu, it won't take up too much of your time. Um, you can definitely finish it in one sitting. And then after you're done, if you found all these meditation spots, if you've stressed yourself out a little bit trying to get that completionist run, uh, then you have all these different opportunities in different environments, different colors, different fish, different sounds. So hopefully Abzu can maybe help you calm down a little bit. Hopefully this has helped you calm down a little bit. Again, this is for a show called Mindful Games, which you can check out on Easy Allies. We're halfway through the season, got three episodes left. You always get the next one early access on Patreon if you want to check that out. And I very much enjoy doing this. I get a little nervous putting these together uh, because you want everything to go well, all the episodes to go up on time and everything to work out well. Uh, but I always find when I'm at the end of these, I'm sad for it to go. That's been more than five minutes, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, and I will see you next time. <laughs>